Hey everybody, welcome to Common Censored. I'm now uh, live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday is Common Censored with Eleanor Goldfield. Hello, apologies for the squeaky sound. If you hear that, we're not squeaking. It's a fan because I don't know if you noticed, but almost everywhere in the Northern Hemisphere is balls hot. I'm not sure why that is. And we, you know, we haven't really ever addressed anything related to uh, said heat. So you know, Lee, I climates don't know. Climates change. They have for millions of years. It's just a thing that happens. It has nothing to do with humans. They have for millions. I'm they, tired of your propaganda. They have for millions of years. Over millions of years. <laughs> That's you're forgetting the second part of the sentence, folks. Uh, yeah. No, also, it's... I have a great blog about the Earth being flat that I'd like you to read later. Oh, sounds good. Sounds good. I prefer when the Earth has uh, luscious curves. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I talked about this a little on the uh, on the the locals uh, the LeeCamp.net live stream yesterday, but it was kind of breaking news, so I just addressed it for a few minutes. Um, Many of you know, most of you know, that uh, abortion rights were essentially overturned by our lovely Supreme Court, our lovely, incredibly democratic, I voted them in and I'm proud of my vote, Supreme Court. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to, I'm actually going to, this is one of the few times I'm going to show an article at CNN. Uh, and this is one of those things, CNN or these other garbage news sites, they're good when there's a benefit to the ruling elite in covering something. So right now this benefits Democrats to have uh, the, the real life story, the, the actual details of abortion rights being overturned. It's useful to the Democrats. Uh, so CNN is legitimately covering this, unlike, say, wars that the U.S. is creating overseas. There's a point about that that I'd like to make in a minute, but go ahead. Okay, so this is, uh, they're talking about how the front pages covered this uh, decision. Uh, Houston Chronicle said Judgment Day, the Clarion Ledger, which I believe is the uh, hometown newspaper of uh, Albuquerque. Oh. Can you not step on my joke lines, please? I don't know if it's actually Albuquerque. I'm just making something up. I don't up. think it's Poughkeepsie. But Eleanor figures she'd make something up on top of me making something up. So I we're was really, yes uh, handing you. No, you, you always you, get mad that I don't yes you. You, you yes on top of me. That's different. That Harold like Ledger says abortion now banned in Kentucky after Supreme Court ruling. And see, here's the thing. Many of these places have uh, trigger laws that basically immediately outline abortion. Sorry, outlaw abortion. Uh, when the Supreme Court, if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, which is what they just did, so here is half of U.S. states could ban abortion as Roe v. Wade is overturned. Trigger bans already in place: Idaho, uh, Wyoming, if that's a state, Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, Missouri, Arizona, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Texas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, banned abortion prior to Roe v. Wade. Somehow they made that illegal when it shouldn't have been. Wow. Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, wait, uh, uh, yeah, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Jesus, nice job, Wisconsin, Michigan. And then passed bans on extreme limits on abortion, oh, so, or extreme limits on abortion that could be enforced without Roe v. Wade. And, you know, basically same states I just listed, but add South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia. All right. Your thoughts. Well, yeah. And I also wanted to, uh, uh, I wanted to point out that the, the, the maps that y'all are seeing and the point that was made that, what, what did it say? Like bans in place before Roe v. Wade was overturned. Tr trigger bans. Yeah. Well, that no, are, that the, are triggered by. We go back to that page. Okay. And so banned abortion prior to Roe v. Wade, right, right, right. which you kind of made the joke that shouldn't have been but been allowed, but this is, kind of the point that's being made uh, is that Roe v. Wade was the absolute floor. This was the least that you could do to protect access. And as we've seen, it wasn't protecting access for the vast majority of people who required abortions. So Roe v. Wade being overturned is some bullshit, but I think it's very important to recognize that abortions were not accessible before this happened. For many people. So basically, and, and the way that this is going to work, right, is that states are going to decide for themselves and the states that you assume would ban it were already 
working on banning it or making it as restricted as possible to begin with. So people in those states were already probably having to travel to other states. Uh, I interviewed someone, uh, Jessica Pinckney, from Access uh, in California, and she was saying that a lot of people came to California from other states in order to access reproductive care there. So this is shit that's already been going on, and I'm not trying to diminish the importance of this, but I am trying to put it into context because I think that this is really important to contextualize and make it clear what's happening here. And what's happening here is the end result that many of us expected for a long time, which was this is what happens when the Democrats bitch and moan about something, but never do anything to codify it into law. For the past 50 years, the Democrats at any single point could have codified Roe v. Wade into law, but they didn't want to because they. this really does wonders for them. It allows them to try and hang it over our heads in November, which you know that they will. And, and in push whatever November Biden runs for office. Yeah, all of the Novembers. Uh, and push out of our uh, frame of vision the economy, climate chaos, uh, the fact that nobody has fucking health care, the fact that Biden is passing stimulus checks for Ukraine, but not the U.S., the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Judah Friedlander tweeted earlier, well, at least everyone's still free to get COVID if they want it. Um, so, like, this is, the, this is the reality under the Democrats. But, hey, everybody, look over here, shiny, shiny, now you need the Democrats to stay in power because abortion. But yes. they did fuck all about it before. They will do. Yes, they will continue to do fuck all about it now. Don't look at the shiny, shiny. <laughs> Let's focus on how we can keep abortion accessible, which includes things like the abortion pill. Uh, you can find out more about that at, I believe it's abortionpill.info. But if you can, just Google that. Can you that, pause for one second and let me say something? Yes. I want to. We'll get to ways to make it continue to be legal in a second uh i just wanted to reiterate uh and and maybe go a little deeper on what you were saying which is for many people it has been illegal for a long time and this ruling will continue what has been in place in many areas which is a ban on abortion for poor people and for abused women uh that is what this does it just furthers that because the truth is rich women or, or women that are not or rich women and, and those that are not in ab abusive relationships where they can't get any freedom uh, have have been and will continue to be able to exercise their abortion rights. They can fly to other states. They can jump in the car and drive and have the money to drive uh, hours and hours away and stay in hotels and all these things. Uh, and it, and so I don't want to just say it's poor women. It also is women that are in abusive relationships, so they could be quite wealthy. But if the guy treats them like a slave, then it, it, it's quite possible they still might not have this right. But that's what this continues. It's a ban on abortion for poor and abused women. This is not a ban on abortion for the wealthier and freer in our society. Yes, it's absolutely right. a class issue, which in turn makes it a race issue. Uh, and, um, you know, it's also a geography issue. You know, the, a lot of people have pointed out that the, uh, the ability for folks in rural areas to access any kind of health care, uh, but, but definitely reproductive health care is a huge issue. Um, you know, if you look at like the middle of the country, like if you live in the middle of North Dakota, for instance, if you live in the middle of West Virginia, your nearest clinic might be hundreds and hundreds of miles away. And these are also, you know, you know, West Virginia is the third poorest state in the country. So your ability to get anywhere else, considering that you are likely very poor, is impossible, damn near. So it's a uh, it's a class issue. It is, of course, a um, also then an accessibility issue in terms of geography. And then, of course, uh, a race issue, because poverty does cut along race lines, just like every other issue in this country. So I know I interrupted you. Let's get back to uh, you were about to talk of ways women can continue to have some rights over their bodies, uh, even in the wake of this insane ruling. Yes. Um, so I think one place that has a lot of great uh, tools that folks can look at is shoutyourabortion.com. And this is a, a site that actually shares abortion stories from folks who have gotten them. You go to their site, shoutyourabortion.com, and you scroll down. <coughs> one of the first things that you see is learn about abortion pills. <coughs> Supreme Court just uh, shouted their abortion, which was this ruling. 
uh, I saw some great graffiti that said abort SCOTUS, which I'm so on board for that. And I volunteered that we could do that by chopping off their scrotus. Uh, so <laughs> I like when you sing your haws to me. Uh, uh, uh. So uh, basically, they've got uh, some really great uh, uh, what's it called resources that uh, that that uh, folks can look at, and they, of course they make the point just like we have that abortion access was never guaranteed by the courts, um, and it cannot be broadly eliminated by legal decisions either especially now that we have abortion pills. And these are things that you can get in the mail. You can order them ahead of time um, to have on hand before. Right. That's, I think that's pregnant. a great, I think that's a great point to, to, to hit home here. Uh, ladies and, and, you know, maybe, maybe guys in a, a loving relationship could help the, uh, the woman in your life do this, but maybe order these pills ahead of time rather than waiting for the day where you go, Holy fuck, I'm in this situation. I think um, it's a great thing for mutual aid good. groups to stock as well, ah, good uh, idea, along yeah. with other medical supplies. It's a good, you can have it in a case. It says break glass in case of emergency, you know, a little hammer there. Uh, you, could, you could have it, uh, uh, some sort of a cord you can pull down, and then it comes down from the ceiling like the uh, masks in an airplane. Uh, I think you have these emergency pills on hand and just ready to go. Amen. In a, tick, in a, in a Pez dispenser. With with Samuel Alito's head on the top. There you go. Uh, the, Shout Your Abortion also has links to uh, to miscarriage and abortion hotlines, online consults for abortion pills by mail, uh, just more information about accessing abortion now that now that this is official. Um, and so I think this is a great resource. Also, if you have a local abortion fund that you know of, please support them uh, because uh, they're going to be. Um, they're going to be what's the word stretched thin uh, yeah. coming up because Slightly. especially those uh, those abortion funds in states where people will have to go to um, or you know leave from. So, but I strongly encourage that if you are furious right now and you want to stand up and make a difference, uh, there's a lot of ways to do that. There's a lot of ways to to fight back for women's rights to fight back against uh, a, a increasingly fascist government. Please don't channel your anger into donations for Democrats. Uh, that no. is not federally, I, I, some things can get, things can be a little different on local and state level, depending, but uh, get, get in a real fight, get in the real fight, not the fucking bullshit two party corporate clown show that we are told is all that matters and is the only place you can have that energy channel, that anger channel, that fury channel. Yeah, go out and fight for Joe fucking Biden. Uh, no, that's not the answer. And, you know, the protests outside the Supreme Court that are going right now, you know, thousands of people, uh, I think there is a use to that in terms of uh, making people aware of the, the harm that this institution can do. But... I also think you should be aware that even before this ruling, and we talk about this many times, uh, the Supreme Court is a completely undemocratic, completely uh, oligarch protection center. That that's what it is. It is the <laughs> center of defending the oligarchy. Uh, sorry, oligarchy. The ruling elite. She's allergic to fascism, <sighs> so it often happens when we get into these topics. <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, it, it, you know, the, the, the Supreme Court is a fucking shit show, and it was a shit show before this. It was a shit show before RBG died, oh. and people just waking up to this uh, should have known this for a while. Uh, yeah, and also, this is, uh, somebody tweeted earlier today, leave it up to the states was also the pro-slavery argument in the 1800s. Right. And I think this is a good a, a good case to make that the, the 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 U.S., when it considers people to be lesser than people, which is clear that that, that they feel that way about women, uh, that it it ensures that these people do not have access to basic human rights, such as the right to control their own bodies. And you see this in you know the history of the United States. You see that in the present. And this is not something just like with slavery. This is not something that you can vote about right i mean slavery is still legal and actually there's a story that we're going to talk about um that has to do with this issue but this is not something that you can vote your way 
to gaining. And people are pointing out that SCOTUS might now take aim at, at, at same-sex marriage. They might take aim at, uh, you know, a whole slew of other decisions that were too progressive for the court. And this- We're sprinting toward, back towards the Stone Age, really, uh, as fast as possible. Which I feel like is not fair to the Stone Age, because I feel like there were some really cool people in the Stone Age. Um, I don't know if they had gay marriage, though. You don't know that. Well, what if they had enough marriage? What if they were smart enough not even to have fucking marriage, right? That's, that's a good point. Um, I'm giving you that one. Thank you. Two points. Thank you. Um, so I think that it's important to recognize the like the structural issues outside of the again like the shiny shiny. Scotus is fucking like a, a totalitarian entity, and nothing that is going on right now is something that you can vote to change in November, just or next November or whatever the following novembers so <laughs> all of the november all of the novembers um i just wanted to spend one more minute on on this issue and and say this is this is another step in a long standing battle against women this is not this is not this didn't come out of a void mm -hmm. this is not just oh my goodness this one right that women had has now been taken away um, the, the, the battle against women has been going on for hundreds of years, folks. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, marriage, you know, we just made fun of the institution of marriage, but marriage is, you know, a lot of it. And there are very progressive and enlightened marriages now. So I'm not saying you can't be married and, and have it be uh, legit and equal now, but, uh, it, it as an institution came about in order to, uh, you know, essentially make sure women were enslaved to the man. Uh, now, uh, this doesn't mean there couldn't have been loving marriages in the past, but I think that it, the reason it exists uh, in the first place and the reason that women were attacked and made fun of and called all kinds of awful names if they didn't get married, if they were, God forbid, 30 years old, because, you know, back then you lived to 32 and if you lived at like 18 years old, they made you mayor. Uh, it was it, it, back then, if you, you know, if you were 30 and unmarried as a woman, you were a fucking witch. You were a demon. You were you were birthed out of the volcanoes of the earth in order to curse uh, other humans and, and destroy people's lives. It and and there's a reason that 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 mentality and that idea existed. Like there's a reason that people were called witches if they were so single and not married and, uh, you know, living on their own as a woman. So this is like, this is not new, the, uh, an attack against women. Like, Not at all. It's a national pastime. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it, it, uh, it can, it continues. And I think uh, when you reform this kind, if you try to reform this kind of, I hate using the word evil because it suggests that things are inherent, like there are people that are inherently evil or whatever. But I think a, a reformed fascism is neoliberalism and neoliberalism leads to fascism. So it's this really, it's this really nice, like circular, like it's a circle Sir of death. Jerk. Well, yeah, but a circle jerk could be nice <laughs> if everyone's like a willing participant. If everyone's uh, excited about plenty it. plenty of lube. And there's a, uh, you know, not some terrible music playing or something. Yeah. Music is a big thing. Yeah. Um, well, oh, this, this brings me back to my, uh, one, one of my favorite jokes I've written that no one seems to appreciate enough. Um, <laughs> but the, you, you look at our society over the years and the way that we have treated women and what we've said about women. And one way, one place you can look, is uh, you look at our uh, statues in society, yeah. what what we have up as, because statues are put up as like, this is what you should look at, up to. This is what you should be in society. This is, this is the pinnacle of a human being. And this is what we should really want to, to shape our own lives after, et cetera. I'm sure in your own towns, you have statues of great people. And if you just look statistically speaking, Across the United States, apparently, judging by the statues, there have been far more impressive and successful horses than women. If you look at our statues. Mm -hmm. And so what does that say about the culture that feels a need to only put up statues of men and horses 
and very few. Your lo- if your town has one, and like your state, if your city has one statue of a woman, that's a rarity. But anyway. Yeah, I can't actually think of any that I've seen. Anyway, I also would like to point out that uh, in Arizona at the Capitol building, police fired tear gas at protesters who were protesting the Roe v. Wade decision from like, the. if you look at videos, they're like on the balcony. It looks like, I mean, it looks like- Jokes on you cops, we were already crying. <laughs> Uh, but of course, the, uh, the 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 Republican snowflakes inside said that it was a hostage situation, that uh, that they couldn't leave the building because of these protesters, and that it was worse than what Democrats say happened on January sixth. I know. And- I love I love that the right wing snowflakes is their favorite thing to call. Now, there's plenty of good examples of liberals being snowflakes, but uh, their favorite thing to call liberals, and then sometimes call the left. And it's like, dude, what's more snowflake than being like, my bathroom could be used by someone who's, uh, you know, transitioning. This yeah. is ruins my life. I, know. I, know. I can't get by anymore because there are people outside that are angry about us being patriarchal fascists. And 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 and, and that makes me feel like I'm in a hostage situation. I saw an 18 year old with an anti fud thing on his shirt. I... Anyway. <laughs> Uh, all right. So next topic about the, our amazing Supreme Court. Uh, well, so the Supreme Court uh, also ruled uh, something about gun laws, but I actually didn't yes. look that up. I actually, oh, I did. Oh, sorry. I just had Joe Biden, what Joe Biden signed into law. He just signed it into law, the, the new gun regulation. But we'll get into that in a second. Why don't you do it? So yours? basically the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court, I like that they always say landmark decision, which I know everything's like, aren't they all, all <laughs> landmark decision? Because that's what the Supreme Court exists to do. So it's like, when was it like Supreme Court mundane, meaningless decision comes down about parking? And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, like just ridiculous. Um, so basically, this uh, it's a Second Amendment case. For those who don't know, the Second Amendment is the one that's so hotly contested. What do they mean? The right to bear arms? What does it mean? Um, and so th- uh, this past Thursday, the court struck down a concealed carry provision in New York, uh, but it affects, of course, more than just New York, that would require gun owners who want to carry a handgun outside their home to prove that they have a unique need for self-protection. Which <laughs> I like... A unique need. Well, yes, that's weird language. Um, but also, why do you need a concealed carry out in the streets of New York or really anywhere. Uh, And the justices in a 6-3 decision said that the restriction, which is a century old, was unconstitutional, uh, making it now easier for millions of people to carry handguns in public. People have pointed out that this will affect one in four people in the United States, making it easier for them to carry their weapons in public. So wait, this decision says that like in New York now you can open carry or... Concealed carry. Concealed carry. Uh, because there was no, there's no longer a what's called a proper cause requirement, uh, because they don't have to prove that there's a specific reason that they need to have a gun on them out in public. I'm just always scared. That's my reason. Uh, so, do, 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 um, the case has now been sent back to a lower court which will likely give the state, the New York state legislature some time to adopt a new concealed carry application system. Um, But basically uh, this is, this is making it so that uh, there's kind of a domino effect and people are pointing out that other concealed carry restrictions in several other States, including California, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, uh, where applicants must similarly prove to a licensing authority that they have a quote, good cause or reason or a, quote, justifiable need to carry a handgun, these could be affected. And basically that people wouldn't need to prove that they need any reason to carry a gun in public. And folks listening to this might be like, well, yeah, I mean, you could just lie on the fucking, like, paperwork. And yes, but I mean, and these- You could say there are Ewoks after me. I know it. These these hoops that they have you jump through are really fucking small, or they're big hoops. You could just walk through them. It's like pretty fucking easy. But the idea is that there are now basically no restrictions 
to carrying a gun in public. And of course, then using a gun in public, right? Because that's why you have a gun is to use it. It's not just there to keep your nuts warm. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so basically this is. Well, I've got an idea. Uh, you know what created many of the bans on uh, wa wa open carry, like stopping open carry and things like that, was when the Black Panthers started walking around with guns mm -hmm. in their neighborhoods because the idea of black mm -hmm. people having guns yep. was actually very upsetting to yep. the white ruling elite. Uh, so I think the solution to this is uh, we should just, uh, like all black people, should start walking around with guns, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I know. Well, if it's we'll see what the white ruling elite thinks of that. If it's if it's okay for one, it should be okay for all, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is another bang up job by the Supreme Court. But again, just like I don't know if uh, we've mentioned that on the show here, but it's like the problem with the the gun laws in the U.S. are manifold, and it's not just as simple as saying, "Oh, you need." background checks you, and everything will be fixed. Oh, you need fucking uh, the, the, a waiting period or whatever and everything will be fixed. The There is a far more large cultural problem of a culture of violence, a culture of individualism, of, of violent individualism, of white supremacy, of patriarchy. These things are, are um, uh, of course, amplified when there's a gun involved. But to suggest that, oh, if we just had background checks and we told people they couldn't have an AR-15, that's not going to solve the problem. And so there's a conversation around gun rights, around gun control um, that is that needs to happen. And I also and would just like to point out one last thing, which, which which has to do with the Black Panther comment. The right, the extreme right wing and, you know, fascists, uh, the alt right, et cetera, and the police, which... I'm being redundant, um, should not have a monopoly on weaponry. And I think that it's important to highlight that every community has the right to self-defense. And however that looks to you is, is something that you and your community should discuss. Um, and the dangers, of course, of in involving weapons in any kind of self-defense that you might engage in. But I do think it's important that the left not just take this stance that all guns are bad all of the time and we should never touch them. We shouldn't know how to use them. We should just walk away from this. I don't think that's the right course of action. Yeah, all good points. Uh, this actually gets to <clears throat> something that you were saying about what will actually create any kind of change will actually <laughs> decrease these mass shootings. Biden proudly signed his uh, landmark. There it is again. Landmark. landmark. Okay. Landmark. Media literacy moment, everyone. Gun control bill. This is from the BBC. Folks, it is a landmark. Okay. <laughs> I, I know you were, some of you were worried. You were like, yes, we know he signed something, but was it landmark? Uh, apparently there was a mark in the land <laughs> that they had a lot of guys go out there and mark that land. And it was landmark. On this okay? day. So, so here's what he signed, and this is the most significant. <laughs> this is the most significant U.S. gun control bill in nearly 30 years, signed by President Joe Biden. Because Which there really hasn't been any others. I know, I know. Wow, this is such a media literacy <laughs> teaching moment. Uh, because there hasn't been any, so of course, <laughs> of course, it's the most significant. Of course, there literally has been zero. Oh my god. Anyway, um, it imposes tougher checks on young buyers and encourages states to remove guns from people considered, considered a threat, encourages. This is another, what the fuck is a bill? What is a law that encourages? This could is you another imagine, one of those words. Could you imagine? Folks, it is now law that we recommend you drink water, okay? From here on out, it is in the books. We recommend water is good for you. You should stay hydrated. It's a law. That we recommend that. But it's like, so let's say that they recommend <laughs> that you not shoot people in the face. Well, then we you still can because it was just a recommendation. We highly recommend you don't shoot them in the face. So yeah, wow. Encourages. It's like what it's like when Biden was uh, was elected and then then and he was talking about how we had to do something about systemic racism and he created this 
committee or something that was going to encourage all of these federal uh, th- these these federal organizations and uh, um, he's a committee making fool that that would encourage them to 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 look at their uh, hiring practices and their office politics and make sure that they're not engaging in systemic racism. We would right, encourage right. them to do so. We, we're going to lightly uh, suggest that you uh, do something about your racism, okay? And it's a law that we lightly suggest that. <laughs> it is a law. Also, we encourage you to get some of the donuts that are in the break room because they're delicious. Yes, white people first. Uh, all right. So to go back to what exactly this landmark bill says, uh, I, cause I want everyone to know this is a landmark bill. Uh, the reforms include tougher background checks for buyers younger than 21. <laughs> oh my 15, God. Uh, this, uh, this, so 15, that 11 year old, but once you're really going to have to fucking. Well, well, and furthermore, once you hit 22 or t- once you hit 21, you can have the fucking craziest background anyone has ever imagined. Well, but- you could have been the fucking demon from Stranger Things when you were 18. But as long as you're 21, your background can be fucked. Well, and also, by the time you're 21, I, I, get, I get that some people start early, but like, how much fucked up shit? could you have possibly done that's like on the record stole so, a pack of mentos from the 7-eleven i mean tougher background checks for people younger than 21 15 billion dollars in federal funding for mental health programs and school security upgrades school that doesn't security but but also that doesn't need to be a, a fucking gun law just do that just a lot more money to mental health programs. That doesn't even need to be part. That's not a fucking gun law. Just a lot of money to mental health programs. But I'm and also, it could be a mental health law. And we could be like, we gave some billions of dollars to have mental health programs. But I'm also curious what the distinction is, like how much money is going to mental health programs and how much going is going to school security upgrades, which could really just mean giving more teachers guns or putting more cops right. in schools, right. which it's been statistically shown right. that putting more cops in schools actually makes them far less safe, especially when you look at things like the Uvalde shooting, which we're going to talk a little bit about the police protection as a concept. And whenever people say just, oh, the answer is to give teachers guns, please, I beg you, think for two seconds about your, about your second grade teachers. And imagine, I, I didn't trust that. I didn't trust Mrs. Coates with a fucking staple gun. All right. I knew a teacher who was fired. This is actually true. She was one of my favorite teachers. I knew a teacher who was fired for spraying a kid with a fire extinguisher. <gasps> Shut up. Yeah, he fell asleep in her class and she sprayed him with a fire extinguisher. And she got fired for that. Why would we trust teachers with guns? They're, wow. Have you met half of all teachers? They're fucking lunatics. With to the. the- Fire extinguisher? To the good teachers out there. I don't mean you're lunatics, but there are some lunatics out there. I had another teacher who was so obsessed, and she was like 65, and she was so obsessed with Patrick Swayze, and he was like 22, ah, and she ah. had posters all over the fucking oh, that's so room creepy. and everything. It was so creepy, because the kids, we were, our age was closer to his age ah. than her age to his age, and we were like, I think you're saying that you're obsessed with Teenage men. But anyway. Wow, it's like peeling an onion out of you. <laughs> With me? What about her? Well, that's what anyway, to continue what's in this amazing landmark gun law, funding to encourage states to implement red flag laws to remove firearms from people considered a threat. These all seem like just common sense. Like these should all be just state laws to begin. Like it doesn't even, but I didn't again, even know this encourage. wasn't legal. Anyway. Funding to encourage. Yeah, what is that? What? Yeah, what is funding? And how do you fund to encourage funding, something? Funding to encourage you something. just hire it's, a guy to go. Huh? No, it's one of those posters uh-huh. with the little kitty cats, you know, that says like, hang in there. And it, it's got the cat with the claws in the branch. It says like, if you're trying to create more red flag laws, hang in there. And it's got the little kitty cat. And they send those posters to every state legislature. And finally, closing the so-called boyfriend loophole by banning all those convicted of domestic abuse from owning a gun, not just those who are married to their victims or live with them. 
So now if you beat your domestic partner, you can't have a gun. <laughs> Basically, you have to already be a fucking awful human being to have to have the state even possibly take away your gun and probably still won't. <laughs> Oh, this is I. Uh, you know, I I would have said this 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 uh, gun this gun law that Biden just signed into into law. I would say that it's meaningless. Except every time I start to have that thought, I just remember it's landmark. <laughs> it's a landmark law. Uh oh, uh oh, landmark. we got you. Well, and I also just like we've talked about before, uh, it really, really, really matters about. Uh, in, uh, enforcement. So, okay, so the boyfriend, the so-called boyfriend loophole, who's fucking enforcing that? Like, who is it? Is it the local police? Like, and, and like let's, they never stop. An well, abuse. lest we forget that, uh, what was, I can't remember the, the statistics on this, but like a large majority of police beat their significant others. So are they going to be the ones to take away the, the, the guns of the... And what if you're a police and you have to have a gun for your... It's like the enforcement of this shit right. is right. really the key aspect. And nobody ever talks about this. Nobody ever talks about how it's going to be enforced in order to make sure that this loophole is closed. You can't just... I mean, it's not like, and then fairy dust, fairy dust, fairy dust, <laughs> and loophole closed. Like, that's not how it fucking works. Like, I don't... Why is this... Like, I'm taking crazy pills. You're forgetting about the billions of dollars to encourage this to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you haven't taken into account. It's and I, I really think you need to give Biden more credit for putting all that money towards encouragement. Very good. Honestly, okay. like, so if it's not the poster with the cat, is it just like a guy that's like sent to like federal legislatures and stuff going, I believe in you. Yeah. You guys can you do guys it. Great. Oh my God. <laughs> good job. <laughs> And there's like a trust exercise. It's like, you know what it is? It's one of those posters with like the beautiful sunset that just says never give up on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Do you have anything uh, else you'd like to say about Biden's landmark gun control laws? I wish I could pee on it. Okay. I think that, I think that was warranted. Thank you. Uh, you want me to go to this one next? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And I'm actually reading from um, Anti-Police Terror Project uh, that posted about this. But I, Sorry, I forgot to do this. By the way, in a, in a minute, folks, we're going to cut off the feeds to uh, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, yeah, a couple of YouTube platforms. So it, we're going to be just at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. So go to rumble.com slash Lee Camp. And uh, you can keep following and keep watching and keep commenting. It's all free to watch there. But uh, the other feeds will be cutting off soon. And the rest of the show will be at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. If you're watching there right now, then you have nothing to worry about. The stream will continue as is. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so again, I'm pulling this from the Instagram account of Anti-Police Terror Project in case folks want to uh, uh, read along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this is a this was something that was brought up by them following what happened in Uvalde, but also pointing out once again how fucking useless. Well, not useless. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse you. Uh, how dangerous the Supreme Court is, and how horrifically anti-democratic they are, and uh, really like extreme right wing. So, back in two thousand five, the Supreme Court decided that the police in the United States are not legally obligated to protect you. And I, uh, I'll just give you some backstory unless are we moving or are you, are we, are we doing this first? We're good. Keep going. Okay. So, um, so this was basically a decision, uh, that, uh, that, that decided that you do not, that the police have absolutely no, uh, a quote to it was a seven to two opinion ruled against Gonzalez uh, that de decided that this Colorado law requiring an arrest didn't matter. It says, quote, we do not believe that these provisions of Colorado law truly made enforcement of restraining orders mandatory. A well-established tra tradition of police discretion has long coexisted with apparent 